Hello again, everybody. This is Computer Science for Everyone, and this is the part two from Boolean logic. Remember, we discussed about two folds and expressions and operators among all of them. And now I'm going to write some code for you, and I want to elaborate to the topic. So let's just start and write some code. Okay, so let's see what do I have here. Um, I just wrote one code because it can help you to understand a little better about uh, the if and else and utilizing the condition. Let's say we're going to create a kind of simple app that system asks you, uh, what is the room temperature? Let's say you're going to say the room temperature is 25. And if it's above 23, it send a command to Urkan to get out, right? Just so let's say you're building a kind of smart house. But I know in the smart house, you're not going to ask people, what is the temperature? There are some sensors in the room, thermometers, and then you detect temperature. But let's say it's just like that. If temperature is between 18 and 20, uh, let's say if three, then what are you going to do? You're just going to just turn on the aircon, but set on, for example, 18 centigrade, the temperature, to make it cool a little bit. And if temperature is lesser than the 18, so just turn off the aircon, right? So if temperature of the room is above 23, you turn on the aircon, but you set it into um, 18 centigrade, you know, 18 the degree, I'm just saying the 80. And then if it's getting between 18 and 23, maybe your preference is, oh, it's too cool, it feels chill. So you're just going to set it to 20. And if it's lesser than that, you're just going to turn it up. So that's what we're going to do. And and let's see what I have here. Let me zoom out a little bit. It's getting Okay, cool. So in first line, I'm getting temperature. So just input temperature. What is temperature? You know, And then you're going to put in the variable temp. And then, and then I'm comparing if temp is greater or equal than 23. So that's the condition. The Boolean expression is false or true. If it's true, I'm just going to say set AC on 80 centigrade. Okay. If temperature is greater or equal than 18, including 18, and it's lesser than, uh, oops, 23, then what I'm going to do, turn on AC and set it on 20C. You know, I assume that maybe, okay, let's say set AC on to make everything similar. Set AC on. So uh, under 220 centigrade. So I'll make it like kind of command. And then else, turn off AC because else means it's lesser than 80. So look at how much Boolean concepts, algebra I got here, you know, a Boolean expression here. So the first, I'm checking this one. And then here I use the and operator because I'm talking about a range. I want to be make sure temperature is greater than 18 and is lesser than 23. So that's, you see the and is very useful to make sure that exactly drop in the range that you want it. So let's run the code. I'm going to run the code. So you're going to ask me what is the temperature. I'm going to say 25, for example. Let's say 25. Why is, doesn't it work? Okay. 25. Set AC and 18 because it feels hot. I'm going to run it again. I'm going to say it's 21, for example. Set AC on 20. And then let's say it's getting really cold. So, and turn off AC. So this is one example of engaging all these sort of um, uh, conditions to get us to build some sort of little kind of decision-making um, application. The second example that I have for you guys, it just like, uh, let's say you're trying to log into a system and you try to type the password, right? And then if the password is correct, then you are in. But if not, then you have to try it again. So you have to try it again. So let's say the system allows you to do it forever, which is not a good thing. If someone is keep trying to log in with the wrong password, something fishy is happening. So, but then anyway, here, I want to try to do that. So look at the problem. Problem is, question we try to solve is, um, we try to ask a person, what is the password? And let, let's say you have very, very kind of strong password. And let, let's say that is secret. Then the word secret is your password, let's say. So as long as, as long as what I'm receiving is not equal by the word secret, so I keep asking. So, so think about the, in the previous course, we had iteration, conditional loop. This looks like conditional loop. That means as long as it is not equal by the word secret, so just continue. So I have the code here to save the time. So I'm just going to paste it here, and then let me zoom a little bit. So look at that first answer. At this line, I put the answer variable empty because I don't know anything about the answer. It's empty for now. And the second line, I start to create my while loop. It says that as long as answer is not equal by secret, the word, the, the, that magical password of yours, then what I do, I'll try to just get the password. And you see, I'm not using any int because I want to keep it as a string. So type in the password. So you're going to type your password. Let's say you're going to type Apple. 
So just going to back again to the line number two. And Apple is not secret. So it's just going to continue again. But when you type secret, it's just going to pass the while loop will stop. And then you will see password correct. So there is a chance this continue forever as long as you don't know what is the password. So let me run the code. So I'm going to write Apple. So again, I'm going to write orange. You know, it doesn't matter if you write down all the fruits in all the languages in the world, it's going to stop here. But the moment I write secret, password correct. Try to see how we use Boolean expression within the while, and then we build a kind of loop with that. So as long as this is not equal, so not equal. Okay, that's just really cool. And you know, remember that it's case sensitive. For example, that if I write down uh, sick red, if if I do that, Sick red, you know, the S is uh, uppercase. You see that going to work because it's case sensitive. It's sensitive to case of your letters. So that's that's Python, okay, secret. And that's the comparison. It's not about a Python, it's a comparison. Because uh, in any program language, when you have a variable in the strings, you compare it, consider uh, the case sensitivity in comparison. So uppercase S is different than lowercase S in Python or any other language when it, when it comes to the string variable. So, and the third, um, and the third example, the final last example, is is I'm gonna I'm gonna use not okay. So here I use a, a not equal right. In the previous one I use and or or. Here I want to use not. So let me write down a kind of code for you. Let's see what's gonna happen. Look at this code. It, it, it doesn't do anything very important, but it helped me to show my my goal here. What is that? Uh, let's say uh, we're going to uh, print all the numbers from from zero to ten, for example. Let's say, okay. Remember, there are different ways that you can do that. Maybe first, let me write down in in a, in, in the for loops way in a range ten. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to print count. I'm going to just print count so I run this so we're going to get just the numbers right the other way that I can do that is um, is to just do something really interesting you know what look at that I create a variable a boolean variable a stop which is false by default force then I have the count okay I have the count and then uh what I do here I'll come and create the while loop and I say while not stop the not stop, it means as long as uh, stop is not true, because as long as not stop, do not stop, stop, stop is not true. Stop is a Boolean variable, right? When stop get true, then not true, remember, is false. So while loop will stop. This is a common way of using not in loop as a loop condition. As long as stop is false, not false is true. So this whole thing will be true. Okay, so you can, in a human way, you can see as long as a stop flag is not on, imagine a stop is a flag. All right, stop. As long as there is no stop flag, so continue. And here, it means as long as a stop variable is not true, continue. What I'm doing here, I print count, which count is zero. Then I increase count variable by one increment, by one unit, and I pass it to the count. And then I check that if count is greater than 10, if it's greater than 10, then what I do, I change the value of the stop to true. So, hey, the stop now is true. So the next cycle, while C stop is true and not stop not gonna work because it's stop, it says stop. So the not is stop, not true is false. Why will it stop? And you won't see uh, um, any number, you know, because in this case, I did the nine. Let me make it like here a nine, it would be better. So now run the code. I got the same thing, but in different way, different, kind of coding you may prefer the for loops yeah that's i agree with you but this is just something that i'm trying to show you to you guys how it works so it is using a flag and using the not this is called flag it can be true can be false so if you do that somewhere in your loop based on some internal condition like count is greater than nine you have to switch flag to true or to false to make sure the while loop will stop because if you don't do that then um uh, infinite loop will happen. Remember our, our example about infinite loop, which was about plus two, plus three, and then one, three, five, seven. And I had a kind of thing that if it's called by 10, it's tough, but that never happened. And the same thing happening again uh, uh, here. Uh, so that's all.
we, we have the whole things here. So this, I wanted to give you three examples. You pause the video, go through them, write down the clip by yourself and have fun. So this was about Boolean expressions.